Okay, we have uh, one more speaker, uh, Victoria Lawsey, who is the uh, city treasurer. And I think I'm going to go ahead and let her talk now. You may have questions, and it may be that some of what she says would answer some of those questions. So let's get her stuff out there, and then we'll open it up for uh, Q&A. Well, let me tell you about her first. Okay, so her bio started with, okay, I'm back. Victoria Lazzi is serving her first term as city treasurer, having just completed her first year in office. Prior to her work with the city, Victoria served on the board of the Palos Verdes chapter of the National Charity League, and before that, on the board of California Alumni Association at UC Berkeley. She filled the finance role for both organizations. Victoria has been a corporate banker for 30 years. She specializes in helping organizations finance projects, implement efficient banking operations, and manage investment assets. Victoria and her family have lived in Palos Verdes Estates for nine years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the traditional, can you hear me? No? Great. Well, I think so, and you're like number four to speak, and you basically are kind of summarizing what everybody else said. So I think a lot of the things that I had, you know, my thoughts and the things I prepared, I think probably touches on what everyone else said as well. But thanks first to PBRRG for organizing this forum and for inviting me to, um, to say a few words. I like our community. I like when we get out, and I like when whichever side people are on. Um, I just like, I like that we all come together to kind of exchange ideas. Um, you know, my motivation, and I think my obligation as the city treasurer, is to make sure our residents have all the information they need to make a thoughtful and well-informed decision when they go to vote. So early on, I was asked to endorse Measure E. And I really struggled with the approach taken and found that I couldn't endorse this one. Um, well, I think the city ultimately needs a tax, and people, have, I think, have touched on a lot of things. Um, I just, I don't like the way this is organized. Um, and I'm going to give you, I always, you know, I'm a numbers person, so I live my life down in the weeds of the numbers, but trying to think of a high-level example, because I know sometimes when you say, well, we need a tax, that kind of, you know, nobody wants to hear that, of course. Um, but just think in terms, our, our overall revenue is a little under $14 million. Um, our public safety alone, just the fire and the police, is um, where are we at? We're at about 12 million. That leaves $2 million for everything else we have to do in the city. I mean, the math just doesn't work. So if you went, even if we went to the sheriff, and let's say the sheriff was $4 million, even if it was $4 million, okay, that's $9 million for public safety, so that leaves us $5 million for everything else. It, it, the math doesn't work. But I think. Um, from where I stand, I think it was a mistake to tie this to the police. Um, a parcel tax is not a question of police versus sheriff. It's what it's the overall financial position of our city, and it's concerning to me that you know I feel that kind of the work wasn't done over the last year. I think that um, it, it was surprising to me that um, a thorough evaluation of the of the financial condition, the a forecast of where things are going, and you know everyone's kind of touched on that. Um, but it wasn't perform performed before placing Measure E on the ballot. Um, so that's, and I really specifically need a detailed analysis of revenues and projecting that out, and a detailed analysis of expenses and projecting that out. You know, it, and you don't even have to be numbers people. You didn't get to Palos Verdes <coughs> Estates by not being smart and successful people. I think people can understand that when it's laid out. Um, the focus should have been on providing residents with the accurate information they need to make a voting decision. Um, so, all of that said, once it was decided to tie it to the parcel tax, um, then it did have to become a question of police versus sheriff. And, um, you yeah, know, it seems like many, if not most, residents probably would like to keep the police, um, but that can't really be a, you know, that's because that's how it's always been done, sort of decision. I mean, it becomes an affordability decision, I think, and at least to consider it. And um, so, you know, when we're looking at affordability, we need to be looking at um, the long-term success of the city. You know, I also probably was the one who said, well, a $5 million tax isn't really gonna cut it here. And so, you know, Maybe because I'm not a politician, I'm a banker. <laughs> so I said, well, if you didn't like a $5 million tax last year, how will you feel about an $8 million tax this year? <laughs> so that's probably why maybe the city council went down that road. But I think you'd rather hear what the picture is and then make a decision, I think. Um, so 
Yeah, you know, I think I think you're being asked to make a decision without all the information. So now, when it does become okay, police, sheriff, and we give some information on what the police cost. Okay, well, we gave no information on what the sheriff really costs. I know there's a lot of numbers. There's a lot, but we don't really know what it's going to cost or what services we're going to get and how that's going to be delivered until we go ask the sheriff for a proposal, which is what I think people call the refer to it as a feasibility study, but when you talk about outsourcing, who outsources something without getting a cost estimate, without getting a scope of work, and what's it gonna cost? So, um, the unwillingness, I think, to get that done, I don't understand, but um, I don't know how you make this voting decision without that. Um, so, and really, you know, when you look at both of those things, we still need to look at them in the context of the big, what's on the horizon for the city, and it, it's, Again, the forecasting, and forecasting three years, five years, seven, ten, I'm not a big fan of ten-year forecasting, but, you know, it can be done. And, um, and really looking at, at the cost, fully loaded, and our operating budget, our personnel, which is mostly what we have, and the longer-term things, the long-term liabilities, the infrastructure, all of that, and get the picture together. Um, the good news, I will say, is that, I think, is um, finally, and really, at the um, pushing, <laughs> really not giving up of PDRRG, the city council did finally form a finance advisory committee. It took a year, a year of not wanting to do that, but we had our first meeting two weeks ago, and I mean, very quick, it's a great group of people, and very quickly honed right in on what the issues are, dug in, and to me, I feel like if that work had been done a year ago, we wouldn't be standing where we are today. Um, but, they, you know, it immediately broke into subcommittees on analyzing and forecasting operating budget, analyzing and forecasting pension, analyzing and forecasting infrastructure. Um, someone wants to do revenue, I'm like, well, oh, I don't know, good luck. <laughs> no, we need a hotel, but I don't know where to <laughs> So I always come up with little ideas on it, we can stick a hotel, but usually that's just to annoy people and not like <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Anyway, so I think that that's work that that um, I think you'll be happy, I think you'll be happy with the outcome. You might not like the answer, I'm not saying you're, all, you know, you're probably all gonna hate the answer, but, um, but at least you'll know that the work was done and that somebody showed it to you and said, okay, now here's your choice, this or this. Um, and it's probably not, you know, it's probably this or this or this, but um, anyway, so now where does that leave us? So that leaves Michael frantically waving his arm at me and, um, so this is where you struggle at the end, right? So now you say, well, if we vote yes on this, and you, you know, you get the five million dollars, you hang on to the police, well, what happens in two or three years when we really figure out we probably can't afford it? Okay, so if you want to make a change, there goes the tax, because the tax is tied to the police. So if we may decide to go from police to sheriff, there goes that money, so now we're back in the hole where we started. We vote no, we're kind of in a tough spot because as a treasurer, that's gonna hurt. I've already been fighting like crazy for a year to not dig too far into our reserves and we will have to dig into the reserves. So, um, you know, we're maybe a million and a half into reserves this year and it'll be a lot more, you know, probably double that I would think to kind of, you know, make our way through. But I guess I kind of feel like we need to go back and do the work right and get it right and come back with the true story, even if it's not rosy, but I think you'd rather know the story and then make a decision and um, rather than trying to guess based on what people say may or may not be the story. So there you go. That ends the formal presentations, and the next 50 minutes or so we have for questions, answers, comments. Um, yeah, what I'm going to try to do my very best is to is to notice your hand up, and even if it doesn't look like I'm looking at you, I see you. So I'm not